Welcome back to AP Chemistry. I'm Jeremy Krug and we're continuing with our lesson on reaction stoichiometry. Now in our last video we looked at three fundamental steps of a stoichiometry problem. Once again step one is convert to moles, step two is mole ratio, and step three is convert to the final unit. Now the reason that we're interested in this so much is that these steps work very well for converting between amounts of products and reactants or vice versa in a chemical reaction. And so this is something that we're going to be calling reaction stoichiometry in this video. Oh, by the way, if you haven't uh, already subscribed to my channel uh, so that you can have constant access to this uh, complete AP Chemistry course online, please subscribe. And if you like, give me a thumbs up. That way YouTube will get the word out uh, about these chemistry videos to other folks as well. Let's try an example. We're going to have uh, copper reacting with nitric acid to produce a brown toxic gas. And that gas is nitrogen dioxide, NO2. So here's the reaction for that. You know, copper reacts with nitric acid to make some water and some NO2, and then this blue copper 2 nitrate. By the way, this is one of those reactions that you need to do in a fume hood. It's really interesting, but it can be very toxic and dangerous if you do this outside of a, of a fume hood in a controlled environment. So please be careful if you decide to do this reaction. Make sure that you have uh, safety equipment and supervision. All right, so if a chemist wants to produce 1.00 grams of this NO2 gas, what mass of copper metal, you know, the Cu, should be dropped into the excess nitric acid? Well, this is where we're going to have to balance the equation first. Now, if you're in AP Chemistry, hopefully you know how to balance an equation. Okay, so I'm not going to go through the step-by-step -step process of that. If you need a tutorial on balancing equations, I have one of those on my YouTube channel. So another reason to subscribe so you can get some review on that. I'm just going to balance it like this. So we have you know four, two, and two for those, and now it's balanced. Uh, so once again, we're going to start with what's given to us. We start with the 1.00 grams of NO2. So that's going to be written down. And the question is, what mass of copper metal should we drop in? So down here at the end, we're going to write grams of copper, grams of Cu. And we're going to go through our three-step process that I showed you a couple of minutes ago. So step one is convert to moles. So that means in our first conversion factor, we're going to put grams on bottom, so we can get rid of the grams over here, and one mole goes on top. And of course, we use the periodic table to find out how many grams are in one mole of this. And so N is about 14.0, oxygen is about 16.0. We have two of those, so that's 46.0 grams in one mole. So grams can cancel right now. We're in moles of NO2. Step two is the mole ratio. So that means that in the next conversion factor, since we started with NO2 over here, I'm going to put NO2 in the denominator of my mole ratio. So that will cancel out. And since we're converting to copper, now the question is how much copper do we need? I'm going to put copper on top. So Cu goes on the top. Now, in the reaction stoichiometry problems, the numbers in the conversion factor, the numbers in the mole ratio, are the coefficients of the balanced equation. You know, all the more reason to balance those equations. So Cu has a 1 understood in front of it here. So the 1 goes there. And the NO2 has a 2 in front of it. So the 2 will go right there. So this is a 1 to 2 ratio from the balanced equation. So NO2 can cancel top and bottom. We're now in moles of copper. But of course the question is grams of copper. So now it's time for step three, which is convert to final unit. So our final unit is grams in this case. So in my last conversion factor, I'm going to put one mole on the bottom so it'll cancel out. And we're converting to grams. So that goes on top. And the number of grams in one mole of copper is right off the periodic table, about 63.55. I can cancel moles top and bottom, and now I just key in the numbers into my calculator, 1.00 divided by 46.0 divided by 2 times 63.55. And hopefully your calculator answer is 
about 0.691 grams of copper. So if you're in the laboratory, in the fume hood, of course, in a safe environment, and you drop in 0.691 grams of copper into a bunch of, ex of excess nitric acid, you would expect to get 1.00 grams of nitrogen dioxide gas released. Let's try another example. This time, we're going to take some potassium. So we had a, a fairly violent reaction in the last example. We have a fairly violent reaction here, too. Potassium, like all the alkali metals, reacts quite violently when dropped into water because all those alkali metals will create a metallic hydroxide, you know, like potassium hydroxide here, and H2 hydrogen gas, which is highly explosive. So we're going to take a 2.35 gram sample of potassium metal and drop that into excess water. How many moles of hydrogen gas do we expect to produce? Well, once again, the first step before we do any of this is to balance that equation. So I'm going to balance it like this, and then we can start the problem. So once again, we're going to start with 2.35 grams of potassium. So I'm going to write that down. And the question is, how many moles of hydrogen gas? So way down here at the end, we're going to have moles of H2. So what's step one in our process here? Convert to moles, right? All roads lead to moles. So in our first conversion factor, I'm going to put grams on the bottom, one mole on top. And how many grams are in a mole of potassium? Well, the periodic table tells us it's about 39.1. So we can put that in here and cancel grams top and bottom. And now we can go on to step two, which is the mole ratio. So in my mole ratio, the next conversion factor, I'm putting potassium on the bottom and I'm putting hydrogen, H2, on the top. So do you see what the uh, co coefficients here will be? Well, H2 has a one in front of it, so I'll stick that in there. And potassium has a two right there. So it's a one to two mole ratio. I can cancel out potassium top and bottom. I'm in moles of hydrogen. Now, normally we have a step three, which is convert to final unit. But we don't have to do that here, do we? Because our final unit is moles. So we can stop right here and do the arithmetic. So 2.35 divided by 39.1 divided by 2. So the answer is about 0 0.0301 moles of hydrogen. So hopefully, at this point, you're able to see how we can do reaction stoichiometry with the three-step process. Once again, convert to moles, mole ratio, and then convert to final unit. Hope you learned something in this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe so we can get the word out and spread the word about my complete AP chemistry course. And hopefully, I'll see you back where we can learn some more chemistry together.